What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the DK Garage. I'm Jeremy, that's Joe, and this is the Race Day Rundown. Yeah, we're going to run in through the all the information that's here to impact what's happening this week as we are in Atlanta. That is correct. So this is a 500-mile race, um, a little bit longer than what we've been doing the last few. There are 325 laps. So a lot of laps, a lot of things can uh, happen. That means there's also going to be a lot more for performance points than what we've seen recently, too. 227.5. Yep, and the stages are a bit longer, too. 105, 105, 115. And this is a brief rundown. You can check out a lot more of what we had to say this week in our podcast. Feel free to check that out in the link above. But let's get into it. Let's go down. This week, we're trying something new with the DK Impact. Let's get uh, rolling with it, and let's see how it goes. Right. So, like you said, for our full information, uh, we we do post that, but this is a quick summary. We got Kevin Harvick, who comes in at the most expensive spot this week, 11000 Um, He's the most recent winner. Uh, he's dominated the races that he's won, a big factor. I'm going to give him a 9 out of 10. So, let's clarify, I guess, before we go on. We're kind of rating these guys a 1 out of 10. Um, I give a score, Joe gives a score, and then we uh, average those out, and that's our DK impact. So this week, Harvick, uh, the starting position he's in, I'm going with a 9. I'm going 7. It doesn't offer as much uh, upside with uh, his price tag. That's why I'm not as high. He hasn't had the performance. That's why I'm not on him as much. Kyle Busch, 10-7, starting 19th. I'm a little bit higher on than you are in this case, so uh, let people know why you're not as high on him because I see a lot of place differential and some upside there. Yeah, it mostly just comes down to uh, recent performance. Um, this year, last year, they're just just missing the mark. So um, I, not a complete fade for me. I'm giving him a six. I'm just kind of cautioning people on him a little bit. He's just... Um, but I know he's a little bit more your favorite, so. Yeah, well, I had more high expectations this year. What would you give him? You gave him a, I gave him an, an eight. eight. Yeah. yeah. Kyle Larson, 10-4, starting sixth. Um, I'm on an eight with him. He's somebody I'm confident, especially with recent performance. Yeah, he's been really strong. Really like what we've seen from him and that team this year, um, except for those speeding penalties last week that kind of bit him. So if they can clean that up, uh, he looks great here. Atlanta's got great history and lesser equipment. I'm at an eight as well. Brad Kozlowski's on uh, the salary board next at 10-2. Starting fourth, he's a guy we've seen a lot from, very confident in. Starting uh, starting up there, we can get some lead lap or laps led. I'm pretty confident giving him an eight. I'm right there with you. Uh, if it's not Harvick winning, it's Brad winning. Um, so it, he may be the one who pulls this out. Uh, I like what I've seen from Penske. Um, they've been they've been real uh, real strong this year, and Brad's real good at this track. I'm giving him an eight as well. Next one is Denny Hamlin starting at uh, first on the pole, ten thousand. Went into some reasons why uh, he could pan out in our podcast. Some reasons to be a little bit uh, leery of having him on the. Uh, on your in your lineup i'm giving him a seven i'm a little bit more confident in his ability than you are it looks like you gave him a five yeah i'm at a five just because there's no pd upside with him uh, he's ran really strong but this is a track that he has struggled at a bit um so kind of for that reasons I'm, I'm i'm a little bit more hesitant especially at 10 uh 10 000, so five for me all right chase elliott nine eight starting fifth doesn't offer a lot of upside, but we don't see him priced under ten thousand very often. I'm a little bit higher because of that. I'm I'm liking him. Not a gr- lot of great performance here, but somebody that's uh, obviously a champion. Yeah, I think if he was starting maybe um, a few extra spots back, ninth, tenth, something like that, then maybe I'd be a little bit higher on him because um, he has had good performance here. But this is also not one of his better tracks so he has struggled i'm at a six real close to you but uh, a little bit more uh, caution on my end martin truex nine six starting second i like him a lot Uh, i'm giving him an eight there's a lot of stuff that uh, i think lends well especially with recent experience or recent uh, performance this year been very consistent we went into detail on the podcast about that Uh, that's why I'm very confident giving him an eight. He's got uh, a lot of momentum coming in too. I mean, he won Phoenix, uh, dominated, really looked good. Um, And this is a great track for him. He's like the second best driver um, 
according to driver rating, the last five races here. So um, a little bit uh, more cautious just because he is starting second. So uh, if he doesn't get those performance points, uh, a little bit tougher to hit. So I'm at a seven. Moving on down to Joey Logano, 9-4 starting third. Very similar situation to Martin Truex. Very good throughout the season so far. Decent here at this track. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give him a confidence score of 7 in my impact. Yeah, I'm right there at the same score, 7. Um, uh, not not too much extra to add. I mean, he's been strong. Uh, it's a decent track for him. Not overly um, impressive here, but um, I think he's worth being in some lineups. Moving on down to Ryan Blaney, 9,200, starting 10th. Got some place differential upside, but uh, we went into detail about some of the cautionary uh, experience that we've recently had with Ryan Blaney and his track history here is not the greatest. Yeah, I'm only at a five for him this week, but um, I will have some with him because I think he has potential to really break free. But overall, uh, my confidence in him this week is, is really about a five, so uh, mostly because of that price tag. A little, little higher than I'd like for the performance he's been at. Okay, well, moving to Ryan, or hello, well, we're at William Byron, 9,000, starting ninth. Very similar to uh, what we just got done with Ryan Blaney in position and salary. But we're a little bit more confident in him, both giving him sevens. He's shown a very consistent uh, finish, finishing in uh, his uh, ability this year. Reason we gave him a seven, consistency. Yeah, I actually would love to give him a higher score, uh, eight or nine, but... Um... Starting ninth, um, this hasn't been a, one of his best tracks, uh, so I don't necessarily see him getting out front and leading a lot of laps, although I do think it's possible. Uh, that's why I'm only at a seven, but to me, uh, I actually feel a little bit better than that seven, but I'm being a little cautious. Alex Bowman's next on the list, 8,800, 14th is where he starts. He's Hendrick teammate with uh, William Byron. I'm a little bit more... I guess on him, it's uh, given him an impact score of seven because I like where he's at um, in the starting grid, and he's could perform more than he has really, I guess, proven already this yep. year. I expect a little bit more. I think he has at some point this this year. I, I truly believe he will have a breakout race. Whether he wins or not, that's hard to say. But I think he'll he'll get up front and he'll really showcase some some nice speed. I just don't think it's coming this week. I think the team is still trying to figure something out. They've, they're they just a little bit off of his uh, other teammates. So I'm actually at a five uh, this week in Bowman. But the guy right below him is Austin Sendrick, 8,600. Um, chalk of the all chalk because he gets the 39th starting position. Um, but you're a little higher on him than I am. Yeah, he's, he's a proven Xfinity Cup winner. He is somebody that has a lot of experience, and he's – not this isn't the first time he's been in a cup car he especially uh already done it this season at daytona i look for him to be able to capitalize on starting in the rear and at least making it halfway through the field yeah i'm at a seven um i think you have to play him because of the place differential upside but i'm a little bit more hesitant just because he in my opinion he doesn't have as much experience as you really need at this track in my opinion and um uh, Things can go wrong when you start in the back. So I am uh, I know he's going to be highly owned. That's the other thing, too. So He's a great GPP fade. Yeah, the guy who's right below him, though, uh, 8,400, Tyler Reddick, is a nice pivot, in my opinion, um, but also a little bit more um, not as nice PD upside. Yeah, he's got a little bit less PD upside. He's not the uh, – doesn't have the greatest numbers here, but he has <clears> – <throat> performed well at a similar track in texas fit with a second place finish last year we talked about in depth in the podcast like we said both giving him a six not the highest guy on our board but somebody we're fairly confident in right uh i really like the next guy kurt bush 8300 um his stats really stand out he's not going to be the guy that i think dominates this race by any means but at that price tag you don't really need him to i'm giving him a seven yeah kyle bush in my opinion is almost like a set it and forget it he's right there kurt, kurt bush kurt bush i apologize yeah. <laughs> too many bushes uh then you uh take... i think i need a, a bush after this <laughs> yeah exactly running down through this real quick but kyle, kurt bush is a, a a a staple in a cash lineup in my opinion this is what you want this is what you're looking for put it in plug it in and go yep uh, Matty, uh, Matty D, Matthew DiBenedento, 8,100, starts 20th. Um, 
I'm at a six, but you're at a five. What's your deal with Matty D this week? Man, we talked about it in the podcast. I just don't have the confidence in what they're doing yet. Uh, I think they'll get there. There's some stuff they're ironing out, but that's why. I just haven't seen it yet. Okay. Um, moving on to Eric Almirola, 8,016. Um, he's, he's somebody that's in a similar situation, similar, uh, experience throughout this season, but he has had rec- more recent success. Yeah, we're, um, we're at a six, so we, we feel similar about him, but I feel like during the podcast, maybe you were a little bit more favorable. I'm a little more, more hesitant, uh, but somehow we both ended up at a six. So I think it's a solid play, uh, 8,000, um, but not one of my favorite plays. Moving on to Christopher Bell, 7,800. He is starting eighth. He doesn't offer much upside, but he's been the model of consistency there at Joe Gibbs this year. He's very uh, difficult not to want to play because he has been so consistent. Yeah, I'm at a six, um, and I think the only reason why I am one spot higher than you uh, at a five is just because he doesn't offer that place differential, so I can understand that hesitation, but he has been fast. I think you got to consider him in uh, at least a few lineups, but I'm not going I'm not going heavy on him because again, that eighth is I'd like to see a little bit more PD upside. Cole Custer is next on the board 7600. He's starting 27th. Man, he's going to be somebody that a lot of people got uh, burnt on, so will you be going back to the well? Uh, well, we should be because a guy in that type of equipment starting 27th at only 7,600, uh, that should be a, a nice staple in most lineups, but I'm actually at a five, and re- realistically, if he was starting any higher, I'd be happy to drop him lower because his consistency this year is just not there. And uh, Like you said, I've been burned by him a few times already, so I need to see something. I'm giving him a six because he does offer that upside. There is potential for him to really pay off and be impactful in a DraftKings situation outside of just the NASCAR piece that we've both seen just hasn't been there. Unfortunately, just horrible finishes at the end performed throughout except mm-hmm. for that point. Moving on down to the list, uh, Bubba Wallace, 7,400. Starting 15th, where are you at on him? So uh, up, up to this point, our lowest guy on this list rating, um, we've got a couple 5.5s average for the DK impact. We got Bubba Wallace combined at a 3.5. I'm at a 4, you're at a 3. Um, we just don't feel... This is one of those guys I really would like people to listen to the Bubba Wallace portion of our podcast because we actually like where they're at as a team, what they're doing. Um, the problem is, is we just think that best he's probably going to finish around where he starts. And from a DraftKings perspective, that doesn't offer you much upside. So that's why he's really uh, the lowest guy on this list up to this point. And you you, you summed it up very well. Uh, that's why we're low on him in the DK impact. We're high on him throughout the season and what their progress has looked like. Unfortunately, just this week, it doesn't align with the DK impact. Right. Uh, moving on down to Austin Dillon, 7,300 starting 13th. He's a guy we're both uh, middle of the road on. <laughs> right in the middle, five and five. He's averaging uh, right there in the 12th, 13th place finish. Um, something that we expect potentially to see here again. I think it's very similar to uh, Bubba Wallace. We think he's going to finish right around where he starts. Um, so because of that, he's going to offer a little bit better place um, finishing position points. So that makes him a little higher on our DK impact, but uh, we don't expect um, a wow performance from him at this track. Ryan Newman's next at 7,100, starting 28th. He's a guy that offers uh, more upside than the guys we just talked about. Um, Has the experience, but uh, hasn't been super consistent the last uh, few races. So somebody I'm a little bit more confident confident in from a DK perspective because he offers that place differential. Yeah, I'm a little bit more hesitant. I'm at a five. Um, it it just comes down to the kind of the inconsistencies, and I haven't been overly wowed. There's been a few races that I've liked, but for the most part, um, uh, with that price tag, Ryan Newman, I'm at a five. The guy coming up next, Eric Jones, seven thousand. We're both a little bit more confident in. It looks like he's starting twenty second, so he doesn't offer the upside, but I think it's been a little bit more consistent and we went into depth about how he uh is fitting in with the new team I, I i'm not going to have a lot of exposure but i want to have some eric jones this week yeah you got to have a little bit of eric jones um 
because he has already come out and had some. I mean, heck, he was in that one lineup that uh, I've won over five thousand in. So uh, I have no problem playing Eric Jones uh, really the rest of the year. Um, but I'm not overly impressed with where he's at uh, from the DraftKings perspective. So we're both at a six, pretty good, but um, not not the best. The next couple guys on the list are fours on our. Both of us have given them fours. I don't think we need to really touch on them too much. We won't be playing them very often. Um, but the next guy that we re- is really relevant, Ricky Stenthouse, 6,300 starting 12th. He was in the optimal last week. He was in the optimal last year. Yep, um, at this track. At yep. this track. So we both are a little bit more confident. I'm giving him a seven. I mean, he's ranks out 10th in driver rating in the last five races here uh, at Atlanta, and he's barely behind Denny Hamlin. So uh, I don't know what he's doing here at Atlanta, why he's done so well in the past. Um, but 6,300 for a Ricky Stenhouse. Not a ton of PD upside, but uh, I'm at a six, so I'm a little bit more cautious, but I do like what we're seeing from uh, him this week. Chris Busher is somebody we should talk about real quick. 6,000 starting uh, 17th. He's Both of us have given him an impact score of five just because of the model of consistency we've seen. Yeah, I I think uh, he's one of those guys that you can use at that cheaper price tag that just might surprise you. I mean, we saw what he did at Homestead, so um, he's... He needs to be considered uh, in your lineups each week until he proves us otherwise. He's got to be up there. A couple of guys we're going to skip and then move on down the list to Anthony Alfredo, probably the uh, the most the, the driver we're uh, off on the most. I'm I'm higher on him than you are. I'm coming in with an impact score of seven because I see that this is more of a wild card race and it f- could fit his style of racing and if he's able to. Uh, stay in a relevant position in that last stage, he could really pan out. I like this from a, just if you look at the surface, the numbers, his salary versus starting position versus equipment and talent, everything points to this is a really nice play. But the thing that we talked about in in our long form podcast was he doesn't have the experience yet because he's a rookie. And he's not getting practice or qualifying to get those extra reps. And he really needs that. So until I can see a little bit more consistency and actually the eight, be able to finish races, he's going to be way cautious on me. I'll have some, but that's why I only have him at a four. Well, that pretty much is all we wanted to talk about from a driver angle. You can find our complete rundown in the our race guide we have the dk impact portion in that as a segment along with a lot of other information that's relevant this week as we come into atlanta we appreciate you watching if you have the time please go back and watch our full version of the podcast we go into a lot more detail and specifics to get you ready yeah we spent a lot of time with it um Thanks for joining us. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content. If you see anything that you'd like us to start adding to these uh, race day rundowns to be a little bit more uh, informational, drop a comment down below. But with all that being said, man, uh, good luck to your lineups. Uh, I'm hoping mine do well, and I hope you guys do well as well.